This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for June 30, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, educator Dr. Kenneth Russell to replace Hannah on PNP ticket in Seesaw. Political newcomer and educator Dr. Kenneth Russell has been confirmed as the People's National Party standard bearer for Southeast St. Anne in the next general elections. This is after former West Indies cricketer and the present cricket administrator Wavell Hines opted out of contesting a runoff on Sunday against the Russell to decide who would be the party's candidate for the seat. In a release on Thursday, the opposition PNP said at its National Executive Council meeting last Sunday, the party's election monitoring committee recommended that the final runoff would include the two aspirants who secured the highest votes, but who did not reach the 50% vote plus one threshold in the initial runoff. Russell and Hines, who emerged as the top two candidates from the first runoff, were selected to move forward in the contest. However, Heinz graciously conceded, according to the PNP, paving the way for Russell to be declared as the candidate to replace incumbent Member of Parliament for the constituency Lisa Hanna. In describing Russell as an esteemed education specialist, the PNP called on its supporters in the constituency to rally around the new candidate. Your active engagement, enthusiasm and dedication will be crucial in building a strong campaign and achieving success in the upcoming general elections, said PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell in reference to Russell. Campbell said the educator's vision, expertise in education, and a commitment to community development make him an ideal candidate to champion the interest and address the needs of the constituents in Southeast St. Anne. The PNP extended appreciation to all the candidates who participated in the runoff, noting that Heinz demonstrated commendable dedication and a commitment throughout the selection process. His gracious concession to Russell exemplifies his strong commitment to the party's principles and the spirit of comradeship, the release said. The party also extended its gratitude to Patricia Duncan Sutherland, who also challenged for the seat, but ended up with the third lowest number of votes in the delegates' selection exercise. Interestingly, a PNP commissioned Don Anderson opinion poll had appointed to Heinz as the person most favored to represent the PNP in the constituency. However, comrades there protested any planned move by party officials to use that poll to determine a candidate for the seat in the next general elections, which are constitutionally due by 2025. Campbell informed the constituency delegates in early May that they would have an opportunity to select a candidate of their choice. The choice of a new PNP candidate for Southeast St. Anne, popularly labeled Seesaw, was brought about by a shocking announcement by Hannah that she would not be offering herself to represent the party in the seat in the next elections. The constituency has been dogged by several issues, including disunity and rifts, between Hannah and the three PNP councillors there over the years. Trelawney Farmer fined over $100,000 for illegal NWC connection. A Trelawney farmer who was in April of this year held for water theft was found guilty when he appeared before the Trelawney Parish Court recently. The accused Leon Madden was fined $5,000 for trespassing on the works of the National Water Commission and $100,000 for unlawfully taking water. Earlier this year, during an operation by the NWC to clamp down on theft, an illegal connection was discovered on Madden's farm in Green Park in the parish. Madden had what was described by Horace Baines, revenue recovery manager for Trelawney and the St. James, as a sophisticated and extensive network of illegal connections, including two larger tanks in which water was stored as well as a pump that was seized. People who have illegal supplies are being encouraged to contact the NWC to regularize and avoid a prosecution. It is better to visit our office and take the necessary steps to become a legal customer than for us to find the illegal supply at your premises, said Beans. Sunline Street factions continue to wage ugly war. 
A police team came under fire on Wednesday in the Tenza Sunlight Street area in Arnett Gardens, St. Andrew, where a deadly gang conflict has prompted two divisional commanders to work more closely to stem the murders and the sporadic shootings. Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, who heads the Kingston Western Police Division, confirmed that some of his men came under heavy gunfire as a gunman engaged them in a shootout in the Zimbabwe area. Phibs previously told the news that the friends turned enemies are behind the bitter rivalry with the factoring of the Sunlight Street Gang. The Philippine and the Jack A. Diamond factions are reportedly responsible for the conflict, which has caused the security forces to increase their presence in the affected communities. The latest fatal attack took place on Tuesday along Lindor's close when gunmen struck hitting two men or one fatally. The deceased has been identified as a 27-year-old Akraman Duhini, otherwise called Esco. The other victim who was shot in the shoulder remains hospitalized. Head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, Senior Superintendent Marlon Nisbeth, said investigations have so far suggested that the murder is connected to issues in the neighboring Kingston Western Division. The senior crime fighter said that the deadly attacks are unfolding whenever persons from high crime areas venture into St. Andrew Central and become more vulnerable. Tuesday's deadly shooting followed a double murder in the area on Sunday. Jahim Jaja Walker and Tajay Watson, both 20, were murdered on West Road in an area called Zimbabwe about 9.30 a.m. Investigators believe Walker was the target of that attack because of his affiliation with men from Zimbabwe, which is connected to the top section of Sunlight Street. They believe men from the bottom section, the Philippine faction, carried out the attack. One resident lamented the impact of the violence in the area. It's about an hour shot a fire for. We had to get flat. Host shut up and care shut up. This war is ugly because it's clearly kill for kill. It can reach a stage where people have to stop going to work because they must shoot everywhere, a resident told the news. The police have since listed 18 men as wanted in relation to various crimes in the division. Two of the men, Carlington Lawrence, otherwise called the Dumplin, of Sunlight Street, and Nico Waldron, otherwise called the Bondog, have been listed as wanted for murders and the shootings. The news reported last week that the Sunlight Street murders continued despite a peace agreement brokered by the police earlier this year. The police believe close to 10 people have been killed in relation to the Sunlight Street gang violence since January. Up to June 24, the Kingston Western Police Division had seen a 25% jump in murders, while the figures plummeted by 43% year-on-year in St. Andrew Central. 40 people have been murdered in Kingston Western, up from 32 for the corresponding period in 2022. St. Andrew Central had seen 15 fewer murders this year. Nationally, murder figures are trending 13% below the 2022 tally, with 628 people killed since January this year. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.